Chris has asked me to give a bit of an opening talk. Um, I'm going to make that full screen. A bit of an opening talk, um, just to warm everyone up and to get everyone's brains flowing. Uh, blood flowing for their brains, rather. Uh, OK, that is full screen. Um, we'll go with it. There we go. Um, I'm going to be talking about, very quickly, about a monorail. So this is a, a really personal problem um, that I, I discovered at Meducation. We, we built this huge Rails app that tried to do absolutely everything. Um, it, it evolves slowly over time, and suddenly you realize that you've got yourself into a situation of absolute dependency hell. If I can switch to the right clicker. Um, you get to a situation of dependency hell. You have gem files that look something like this with 50, 100 different gems. You know, I've got, this is literally real from projects. You know, can we just move to flog? This gem is clashing with this gem. You get yourself into an absolutely horrible situation. And you have a massively tight coupling um, between all the different components. You get strings of behaviors. You know, one of these sorts of two patterns, create a user and then do this and then do this and then do this. Really bad programming. Um, but things that just when you're trying to get everything into one space naturally happen. It gets really messy, it gets really complex, it becomes hard to understand, and that means it becomes hard to maintain, and that means bugs. So one of the solutions to this is, is PubSub, um, the publish subscribe pattern. And so this is something we did uh, about a year ago, and we transferred this large monorail, broke it up into lots and lots of components, uh, and got them all talking to each other. So if you don't know PubSub, this is what PubSub looks like. You have one or more publishers that send messages about events out into the ecosystem, and then you have lots of subscribers that are listening to those events. And the publishers don't know who they're publishing to, and the subscribers don't know where the messages are coming from and don't know about each other. All they know is that something's happened and they need to uh, act on it. So to give you an example of what this might look like, um, you might have, say, a mobile app and a website, both of which are publishing a message out about a, a new user being created. And then you might have all of these different things that, that respond to that. So these are from our app. We have something that sends a welcome email, someone that generates some friendship uh, suggestions, something that determines the user's clout that builds an initial news feed for them. And all of these things have totally their own concerns, um, which is great because it means you can make very, very specific services. You get great loose coupling across this whole network. Uh, which gives you scalability, it makes it very easy to add and remove functionality, gives you a great speed of iteration. So we made a gem called Propono, which is what I'm going to be talking about, um, and you're all going to use in a minute, hopefully. Um, and this is a gem that's built on top of Amazon Web Services, uh, and which gives you PubSub in an incredibly simple fashion within Ruby. So we built this on top of simple notification services and simple queue services. You don't really need to worry about any of this, but I'll just show you very quickly how it works. You publish a message out onto a, an SNS topic. That gets proxied onto various SQS queues, and that ends up with various subscribers that are listening for these messages. But Propono handles all of this automatically. It creates those things. It securely glues everything together. It handles failures, errors, retries, all of the different uh, problems and all the different scenarios. There's no setup. It's instantly and, in effect, infinitely on Amazon scalable. It's as reliable as you can get. It's really fast, and it's insanely cheap. We send millions of messages between all our different services each month, and it costs us a couple of euros. Um, it's a two-function API. You have a subscriber that's listening to queues. Uh, it listens on a topic, and every time a message appears, it gets something, and it does something with it. And you have a publisher, and this publisher publishes messages back onto that topic. So I want to try an example. Um, so if you all open up your laptops, um, you guys are going to play and start publishing some messages into some code that I'm about to try and write. Um, and I mentioned this earlier to those of you that are here. Please use the conference internet responsibly. I'm sure I'm not the only speaker that's going to be um, asking you guys to do stuff and interact with me. Um, if you have any of these things running, it will probably kill it for everyone. There's 550 people here all on the same internet connection. Um, so please do turn those things off if you have any of them running. Um, if you crack open a terminal and run gem install proponent, uh, I'll give you a second to do that. Um, I'll put that back up in a second. What I'm going to work out for the next few minutes is who's here. And I've got three objectives of services I quickly want to build. I want to build a Twitter list. And this is just going to be a Twitter list of everyone that's here. So you guys are going to publish a message, and that's going to put all of you into a Twitter list. I also want to follow you all so I can see what interesting things you're saying throughout the weekend, what questions you're asking, all of those sorts of things. And I also want to see everyone's faces on the screen. So everyone that sends a message into this proponent network, your face is going to appear on the screen. Uh, it's going to look something like that. You'll be sending a message with your handle in. 
uh, and the various services will pick those things up. So in case you missed it, gem install propono is what you want to type in for those of you who have got laptops open. So I'm going to try, try and build an example, um, which can only go badly at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, and also, you probably can't see, but my screen is now flashing green rather than actually being black like what you see up there, which is quite concerning. Um, so this is uh, Vim. Can you guys all see that, guys and girls? So this is a config file. Um, you can get some nice secret keys there, which I ask you not to abuse. Um, we've got, <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Um, I will be canceling all of these quickly after the talk. So we've got two quick bits of configuration there. Um, one for Propono, which just sets up with an Amazon access key and secret key in a queue region. In this case, we're using EU West 1. And then uh, a Twitter uh, setup, um, slightly different syntax, but similar, which sets up a consumer key and a consumer secret, and also an access token and access secret. That's a my personal access token and access secret. And there's a couple of other things down there, which um, I'm going to use in a second. So we've got a few different scripts we're going to very quickly write. Um, the first of these is uh, the script for making lists. Um, I'd like you guys to be my pair for the rest of this um, uh, session, especially Eric, wherever Eric is, who maintains the Twitter gem. That would be extra helpful. Um, so we'll re require this config on the left, and then we're going to also set an application name. Um, and this is going to be Baruco 14 uh, lists. Um, and we'll just do a put statement to say we're ready to go. And then we're going to listen to a queue. Uh, and we're going to call this queue handles. Um, and when we get a message on here, or a handle, as it's going to be, we're going to do something with it. So we'll say adding to list uh, handle. And then we're going to use our Twitter config that we've got. And we're going to say uh, Twitter add list member. And the syntax for that is to take my Twitter handle and then the Baruco 2014 list and the handle. Simple. So that's now a script ready to run in, in our network. So you could pop this on Heroku, or we just pop it on EC2 machines on Amazon. Um, if we, what's it called, lists. So if we run that, that's going to sit there. And if I don't make any syntax errors, hopefully in a second, it will say that it's ready to go. Um, Excellent. So that's a good start. So next we have uh, a publisher. So this is something that's going to publish a message into the network. So here we're going to say require relative config again. We don't need an application name because we're just pushing things out. Uh, and if we say we're ready to go again. And this one is just a publisher. So it's just propono, publish, handles, and then a message. Uh, and actually, I'm going to just say whatever the first thing I pass in to the script. Uh, and we're also going to say that we should do this synchronously, not asynchronously. So by default, Propono spawns new threads for different messages, which is probably a really rubbish default, um, but something we went with and that we can't really change very easily now. So uh, that's our publisher. So we've got uh, this lists over here. Uh, and over here, we're going to say publisher. And I'm going to try and add an account called advanced Ruby to the list. So this is uh, a new project that I'm working on, some advanced Ruby tutorials. Um, I'm going to be using it just as my test account for this session. So we've got a list that somebody has added themselves to. Um, and we're going to, good work, whoever that was. Uh, and we're going to see if we can push someone to, to this list. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this Ruby publisher advanced Ruby. That's going to send a message up onto this, uh, I'll look at the code just to show you, onto this handles topic that we've got here. Over here, uh, the list script here is listening for something on handles, and when it gets something, it's going to add this list member. So that's published advanced Ruby to handles via SNS. Uh, we can publish via lots of different things, TCP, UDP, or via straight up to SNS. And then over here, we can see that's worked really well, and somebody's already got on here, nice. Um, uh, please don't abuse my keys. Um, and <laughs> Um, we can see that that's added advanced Ruby to the list. So hopefully, if we refresh this, we should see, there we go, advanced Ruby has been added to the list. So we've now got a service, and we've got something that can publish messages out to the service. So let's do the same for following. So exactly the same script, but I just want to follow the handle. So if we go back over here, and we run that. Uh, oops. 
might be. Oh, I'm going to need to change the application name. So if we run that, hopefully that will say it's ready to go. And if you see over here, I'm currently not following this account. So we're ready to go. If I run that. Now this message is going to get picked up by both scripts again. So it's just going straight back out there. And the script over here, somebody else has picked up. Nice work, whoever that was. Um, and that's published advanced Ruby. You can see here there's a nice little bit of uh, different code going on. So um, each time a hash is generated for each message that's published, and that hash is then uh, available all through the stream. So you can see the B1 that I've just posted has come there. And over here, hopefully, yeah, we're following somebody here. And the other message hopefully gets picked up in a second as well. So who is this account? Let's get this person on the screen. Excellent. So whoever that is, I'm scared of you right now. Um, good. So there you go. That's also now following Advanced Ruby. So we've now got two services sitting in, these net in our network. Uh, let's just check that has actually worked. Uh, although I am following this person. Yeah, great. I'm following this person. Cool. So those are two really simple ones. Um, I want to just write uh, a slightly more complicated one now. So what I want to do here is make a quick snart trap that's going to appear on the screen. And when you tweet, it's going to go and get, sorry, when you publish a message, it's going to go and get your face off Twitter and put it up on the screen. So. I'm going to make use of um, the uh, HTML5 event source library for this. So if we just uh, quickly code up uh, some images. Uh, so we're going to get a whole load of images that are just sort of small and fit across the screen. I have no idea what it's going to look like on this res. Uh, and we can, I've got, uh, cool. So we're going to have in here a div with an ID of images. And we're going to say that we want uh, an event source. So I don't know if you've used this. Um, it's really cool. It's just like WebSockets built into HTML5. I hadn't used it until I was looking at how to do this uh, talk and came across it. And you just say on message equals a function that takes uh, the arguments of whatever comes back from Sinatra. And we're going to say, uh, so this include, I just put here was jQuery in case you didn't notice that. So I can now say um, images uh, dot append and then image src equals something e dot data. So we're going to send data out uh, from our Sonart trap just through sort of WebSockets style things into here. And that's going to hopefully add an image. I'll just make this a bit wider so you can see and you can get all of my secret keys. Um, cool. So we're going to require Sinatra. And we're going to set the server to be thin. And we're going to create a variable called uh, connections, which is going to be an array. Uh, and so that just sits within Sinatra's settings if you're not used to it. Um, and then we're going to say we want just to get a, a root. And we can just ERE, whatever I call that, web page. Cool. And then we're going to get uh, a slash stream. And this provides uh, a text slash event oops, stream. And in here, we have a stream, which is going to be a keep open stream. I can't type. And we're going to say settings.connections. So we're going to store that, uh, store that stream in this connection setting. So just to recap here, we'll render this page. Uh, we will connect to this event source called streams, which will get us open stream and put a connection in. Um, we're then going to require our config. And we're going to say uh, in a new thread, just so this can execute uh, alongside Sinatra, um, propono dot uh, listen to Q, and we need to add in uh, propono dot config application name um, is Baruco 14 faces. We can say listen to Q handles, 
each time we get one of those, we'll have a handle. And we're then going to get uh, an image SRC from Twitter, um, which is a user. So that will get the user, and then it will, I can never remember the syntax. I think it's that. Uh, that will get the image of that person. And then for each of the connections we've got, we're going to say, uh, push in there some data, and we want that to do that, which is the syntax to push that through. Um, oops, that's not what I want to do. That would have been bad. Um, well, it could have been good, because I could have used sample one, and uh, it might actually work. So we've got some code, uh, some HTML. We've got Sinatra, we've got a server, we've got um, uh, a web page that renders, we've got a stream that sits open, uh, we've got our config, we've set our application name, we've started a new thread, we're listening to this queue, um, we're getting this SRC, uh, we go through all of the connections that we've got open, and we render that out. <sighs> Let's see if that works. Somebody has been sending, uh, interesting, Keeping some sort of rate limits. Um, Good. Somebody's spamming me. Um, thank you to that very nice person. Uh, so let's try that and see how many syntax errors I've got. It's exciting. So I've got that over here. Cool. See if there's any JavaScript errors, which there are not. That's scary as well. OK. So let's publish something onto the advanced Ruby topic and see if this picks anything up. It's a great moment of patience when it either works or horribly falls apart with no idea of why. Oh, wow, it's picking something up. Ah, is it going to put an image in there? What do you reckon? Oh, I don't think it is. Oh, yes, there we go. Amazing. Right, that's quite exciting. Cool, hello. So, thank you. Cool, so what you can see happening here is um, all of these things are getting queued. So the reason my one didn't immediately appear there is because other people had managed to somehow get this code already and start putting messages in. Now, I presume the reason everyone's got the code is because down here I've got this bit.ly link. To anyone that hasn't noticed the bit.ly link and isn't inquisitive, if you go there, you'll find some code that looks something a little like this. Um, these are keys that are definitely going to get thrown away. Um, if you copy that, pop that into a Ruby script and run that quickly and change where it says I hid to your own handle, um, you should, a few seconds later, see me following you. You should be added to this Twitter list over here. Um, and refresh a few things. There we go. We're starting to build this Twitter list. 15 people in there already. Um, and we should start to get some faces appearing on here. This is cool. Right, who's the pony? <laughs> there we go. Man over there. Good work. Um, cool. I'm going to leave this up for a second, and everyone that's got a laptop open can have a quick play. Um, I really like people using the open source projects that I write and maintain. Um, if anyone wants to play around with Propono um, this weekend, the best uh, sort of concept or idea that comes up, um, I'll get them to come up on tomorrow afternoon. You can demo it to everyone here if you want to. Um, and also, anyone that does play, I'm going to give uh, lifetime access to all of the new advanced Ruby stuff I'm doing as well. Um, if you want to pair on any of that over the weekend as well, I'd love to come and pair with you. and we, we can